so what happens is that this electron, like every electron, has a charge, but it also has a magnetic dipole. It's like a tiny, tiny, tiny magnet. It's called a spin. The word spin is a bit of a um, historical uh, misfortune. So to some degree, in a classical world, you can think of an electrically charged particle, so something that has a negative charge, and if you make it spin, literally spin, like a gyroscope around an axis, it will, in fact, produce a magnetic field. Okay? So it will be like you know, this magnetic dipole. And so you can describe this object as a magnetic dipole that points in some direction. In reality, the spin is a purely quantum mechanical property that actually comes from solving some relativistic equations of quantum mechanics, the Dirac equation. And the, the, the most striking example to explain why you cannot think of the spin as actually the electron spinning on itself is when you think of the neutron. The neutron also has a spin, but it has no charge. So how can you say, oh, the neutron is spinning on itself, therefore it produces a magnetic dipole? Well, the neutron has no charge. And yet it has a spin, just like the electron and the proton. So imagine a solenoid where you have wires. So on this side you have current going in, and on this side you have current coming out. So you have the current going this way. That produces a big magnetic field in this direction. Okay, so that's what we call the B0. That is the static magnetic field that is produced by us by connecting a large current source and running a current down this solenoid. Okay? So in our laboratory, we work with fields of about 1.5 Tesla, which is a strong field. In fact, we have superconducting magnets to do this. In this magnetic field, mm -hmm. the magnetic dipole that is associated with the spin, with the particle, will have its lowest energy when it's pointing along the field. Okay? Think of the needle of a compass, literally. Okay? The Earth's magnetic field is oriented towards the north. Okay? Yeah. So when you take your compass, you will see the needle pointing towards the north, because that is the direction where the magnetic needle has its lowest energy. But the point is, the spin is not just the needle of a compass. It's not just a switch. The spin is a quantum mechanical object that can be in 0 and 1 at the same time. So you can create what's called a quantum superposition of 0 and 1. So at the single spin level, it's often hard to see where the quantum mechanical you know, speciality comes in. It's much more striking when you put two of them. Okay. then it goes completely out of your classical intuition. Let's do it. Okay. They could be the two electrons that are bound to two different phosphorus atoms. Now, when you have two electrons interacting like this, what you'll find is that there are four, I mean, intuitively, you would think there are four possible states, right? That's where you have electron up, electron up, electron up, electron down, uh, down up and down down, right? You would think that those are the four possible combinations of those two spins. In reality, what you'll find is that you have the up up and down down, that's fine, but up down and down up are not the natural quantum states of those electrons. Those electrons will find themselves in what we call a quantum superposition of down up and up down. But that quantum superposition has absolutely no classical intuitive picture to it. In this case, this quantum superposition of up, down, and down, up is what we call an entangled state. The two electrons no longer have a direction of their own. Okay? So you cannot say this electron is down and this electron is up. The two electrons are in a state where they have the opposite direction but they do not have a direction of their own. Okay? So it's only when you measure one of them and you find, okay, this is down, that this one ends up being up. But until you measure them, they are in a state where their only property is being opposite to each other. Why is this so powerful? It's powerful because now you have these four quantum states, right? You have the 
down, down. Then you have this thing that we call the singlet state, which is 1 over square root of 2 uh, down, up, minus, up, down. Then you have this thing that's called the t0 state, which is 1 over square root of 2 uh, down, up, plus up, down. And then you have the up, up. Okay? Why is it that the simple up, down, and down, up are not the natural states of the two qubits? That is really where the whole fundamental issue lies. Up, down, and down, up are not the natural states. It's because they are coupled. Okay? We said we have these two spins that are coupled to each other. Now, it's exactly like this double pendulum. You have two pendulums, and they're coupled to each other by the string. Okay? So let's say I now set one pendulum in motion. Let's look at what happens. You see, now the other one starts to move as well. And at some point, which is about to happen, you'll see this one has actually stopped, and all the energy is in that one. And then it's going to come back. Now this one will slow down, and the other one will start moving again. So you see, this configuration of the double pendulum is not a stable one. Right? So if you just put one pendulum in motion and the other one not in motion, it doesn't stay that way. It kind of swaps. So you can think as pendulum moving and pendulum not moving as the spin up and spin down. So if you prepare up down, it doesn't stay there. The up will eventually turn into down and the down into up, like the pendulum that moves will stop and then the other one will start to move. Okay? So then what is the stable configuration for the coupled double pendulum? Well, there is one possibility, which is to put both pendulums in motion at the same time. Hmm? Like this. This will persist unchanged for, well, not forever because the pendulum has dissipation, but if we had a perfect pendulum, this would persist forever. Okay. So this is one possibility. The second possibility is to do it this way. Okay. This configuration will also persist forever. But it's different from the previous one. Here, the two pendulums are going in opposite phase, whereas before, they were going with the same phase. So that is the meaning of that minus sign that we saw in the two superpositions. So you can think of this as the superposition of pendulum left moving, pendulum right not moving, and the other way around. But you need to distinguish this one from this one. And that minus sign is what distinguishes the two. Then you have like there's about 300 classical bits, which is as many particles as there are in the So we are really reaching the atomic side, but not in some exotic laboratory.